Hello everyone, this is Charlie and welcome back to my channel. Sorry it's been so long, but I, things have been a little bit busy, so I apologize for being for it being so long in between uh, videos, but I will try to be back very soon with my next review after this one. Okay, um, today I'm going to talk about my top 10 tips for first time cruisers. Now, um, this are these are things I do for myself. When I cruise, I've learned over all the different times I've cruised, which makes things easier, how to save money, how just to make your life a lot easier and makes the trip a lot more enjoyable and will save you some money at times. Okay, uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, I want to talk about the hurricanes that devastated the Caribbean, the Eastern Caribbean. These are some of my favorite islands. St. Martin I've been to a number of times. St. Thomas, Puerto Rico, unfortunately, it is devastating. I hope the islands will be back from this sooner rather than later because these are very beautiful islands. And this is just how I feel. I hope that the, they come back from this very soon. And next year, I'm talking about cruising back to those islands that were affected by the hurricanes. I was supposed to be in St. Thomas and Tortola on my cruise in December because for obvious reasons, the itinerary got switched to the Western Caribbean. So unfortunately, nothing we can do about that. So I just hope those islands get come back from this and I'm able to go back to cruising to them this time next year. Okay, um, these tips are for the way I cruise. And what I recommend, they're not for everyone. If you've cruised a few times before, you have your own way of doing things. But for me, this is what works. So here we go. Uh, the first tip I have is consider flying into alternate airports. For example, if you're cruising out of the port of Miami, uh, the cheapest airfare may not be into Miami. It could be into Fort Lauderdale or West Palm Beach or, or even uh, Fort Myers on the other side. Uh, I did this one time. My friends and I we were cruising out of Miami. The cheapest airfare was into West Palm Beach. Now there were three of us, so what we did was we were spending the night in Miami the night before the cruise anyway. So we flew into West Palm Beach and we rented a car. We split a rental car three ways. It made things a whole lot cheaper and it it works. If you're going with a group of people, consider flying into wherever uh, the to one of those airports if you're cruising out of Miami or if you're cruising out of Tampa you can consider flying into Tampa or Sarasota and just uh, running a car for what uh, for whatever is cheaper because it will save can can at times save you a lot of money okay um, my second tip is always fly into the port city at least 24 to 36 hours before your cruise for example I have a 24 hour a 24 hour rule. If I'm cruising out of Miami on Sunday at 4 p.m., I am in Miami or Miami Beach at the very least by 4 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, that's just my rule. Um, it makes me feel more comfortable. Uh, another one that goes with this is um, either take a non stop flight or a, def a direct flight, which makes a stop, but you don't actually change planes. You stay on the same plane. Um, I also try don't check. I try not to check a bag if I don't have to. Now, if you're going on a cruise line like Carnival or Royal Caribbean, um, where you have to bring your suit for the formal nights, unfortunately, times then that kind of makes your decision for you. Where you got to check a bag. So if you have to check a bag, for example, if your family of four going on your first cruise on these cruise lines, consider checking one or two bags at most. Do not check four one bag per person. You, uh, last thing you want to do is have a bag lost and you don't get it until halfway through your trip where you don't get it at all. So that's one thing I suggest. If you don't have to, don't check a bag. Don't check a bag. Don't put that stress on yourself. Don't. Uh, for, also, for another reason I don't check a bag is I hate waiting about 40 to 45 minutes at the baggage claim for a bag. It, that, it, that makes me nuts. So another reason I don't check a bag is I just don't have the patience to wait at the baggage claim anymore. Um, my next tip is don't overpack. Don't overpack. If you're going on a seven day cruise, pack for three to five days total. Okay? Uh, definitely pack for dinner every night, but you got to keep in mind you're on vacation, you're going to be in port, you're going to buy clothing, t shirts, maybe those flowered shirts, button down flower shirts, 
just bring what you need to pack, okay? Uh, for like three to five days, you're going to be buying stuff in port. And also, soon if you want to, uh, Carnival, I know they have the uh, your self-service laundry where you just, you know, the old style where you put the coins and you do your laundry. And all the other cruise lines, including Carnival, has a laundry service, which obviously you pay for. But, like I said, you can choose to do your own laundry, pay to do laundry, or just like I said, pack for three to five days of the cruise. Keep in mind... Each cruise has a couple of sea days, so when you do have the sea days, that's something you can wear. You can wear a t-shirt to the pool that you wore during the day before when you're at port or something, or or you're going to be buying t-shirts in a port of call, which you can wear one or two days throughout the cruise, uh, what a, the, however many t-shirts you decide to buy. Um, also, there are things you just don't need to bring with you when I said don't overpack. Shampoo... Uh, body wash, towels. Um, these are all provided in your room with the uh, by the cruise line. Same as staying at a hotel where you have the little shampoos or you have the little or the towels. These actually, all the cruise lines have the body wash and the shampoo in the shower. Like you just push one of the things, out it comes, you use it. So it's something unless you're using it for a specific reason for dry skin or the dandruff shampoo or whatever. And you feel comfortable bringing your own, you can do that, but you don't need to bring it if you don't want to. They have them, it's provided for you. Certain okay, uh, my next tip is certain items you buy in your port of call. For example, you're cruising out of Florida in December in the winter months, buy your sunblock once you get there because they will have better. Um, a better selection. Certain parts of the country you cruise certain times of the year where it's warm weather year round, 80 degree weather, you're coming from someplace cold, they're gonna have a better selection of sunblock. Just bring a travel size with you for when you fly down and then when you get there just buy what you need and that's just not sunblock. Buy the sunblock, mouthwash, toothpaste, basically all your toiletries and once again this also helps you with not having a check back when it comes to the uh, liquids and gels just buy it when you get there half the time there is a better selection and also it just makes your life easier especially when it comes to check not checking a bag okay. um another thing with cruising is this is my fifth tip is use collapsible luggage you have to understand sort of like a hotel room there is not a lot of room in your uh, cabins most of the luggage goes you have to find a way to put it under your bed so using collapsible luggage creates a lot more space under the bed to slide your luggage or in the closet it, it takes up a whole lot less room so use it I usually use a duffel bag if you have one use a rolling duffel bag um, or just a carry-on if you're using a roller use a carry-on size roller because like I said there there's not a lot of room in your cabins they're smaller than the hotel room not that much smaller but they're still smaller so you gotta keep in mind you don't have as much space as you think you are so always consider collapsible luggage for just to have more space back also backpacks if you travel a lot and you backpack a lot bring up uh, the backpack you would normally go backpacking with that would also easily go under the bed and create more space for you in your room. Okay. Um, one thing, uh, my next tip is, is pack for the first day of the cruise. Keep close eye on the weather forecast because you want to get on the cruise ship, you want to be able to enjoy the first day. Always uh, in your little carry-on that you're going to bring with you, with it, whether it's your backpack, a beach bag, whatever, have a bathing suit with you, have uh, your sunscreen, flip-flops, medications, camera, or you could wear these items, it doesn't matter, but you're not going to get your check baggage into about th until 3 to 5 p.m. after you sail away. So if you want to enjoy the pool the first day of the cruise, you basically have to bring it carry it on board to cruise with you. That was my uh, rookie mistake of mine the first time and second time I cruised actually. So I did not bring my uh, uh, swimsuit with me. I didn't bring sunblock with 
me, so I was hanging out on the cruise deck, but I couldn't go in the pool, and it was 85 degrees out. I was basically just lounging down in a chair, just trying to uh, relax, but like I said, I really wanted to go in the pool, and I couldn't because I didn't know that to bring it with me. So always have your swimsuit with you, sunblock, flip-flops, anything you would basically wear to the beach. Wear on the first day of the cruise or carry it on with you. As well as I said, medication. You always want to have your medication with you just in case you ever need it. Or you it, sometimes your baggage just get delayed being delivered to your room. And if you need it at night or whenever you need it, if your baggage is delayed to your room, so is your medication. So carry that on with you as well. My seventh tip is um, your folio budget. This is where a lot of people spend a lot more money than they expect to, is on their folio, on their folio. You have to have a budget. Now, certain cruise lines do not allow you, and I said do not allow you prepay the service charges, which is basically the, the gratuities. So that automatically gets on to your folio for Carnival, who I know for a fact, does not allow you to uh, prepay it. You're gonna scout anywhere between ninety and ninety-five dollars. That is automatically added to your folio. So if you're going on a cruise line like Carnival, your folio already has about ninety-five dollars on it. So if you have a boat, um, a folio budget of about two hundred and fifty dollars, three hundred dollars, that's ninety dollars already added to it. So keep an eye on your folio budget and do not go over it okay seriously your folio budget if you you can check it periodically throughout the cruise ship that you usually have kiosks or you can check it from your tv screen but keep an eye on your folio budget it is really easy to go over your folio budget so always have a certain amount of money you want to spend per person on board the ship and keep an eye on it otherwise the last day to cruise you're gonna have a free you're gonna have a a surprise when you look at your final folio bill. Okay, um, my eighth tip is get the drinking package. I've said it before, I will say it again, it saves you a whole lot of money. Now, a lot, it won't kill your fo folio budget as I talked about before. It You pre-book it, it's going to be the same amount of money, actually less money than if you book it on board. They give you about a $50 discount for pre-booking it, so that is something you really want to consider, especially if you plan on drinking on board the cruise. Another thing is, the cruise uh, drinks are very expensive on board. You might not think so, that a bottle of beer could be about $5.50 $5 or higher for me. I'm from New York, that's what it is when you go into any bar, pub, saloon here in New York. A bottle of beer is about five dollars, that's five, six dollars. For me it's not a surprise, it's the same price as it's here in home New York. But if you're from somewhere else in this country where a bottle of beer is maybe two fifty, three, four dollars, and you see it's six fifty on board the cruise for a good beer like a Heineken, you're gonna be like, Oh my god, this is expensive. So gotta keep in mind on a cruise ship. The drinks are more expensive than they are at home. So if you're going to have like four or five, anywhere between five and ten drinks a day, just prepay for the uh, drinking package. It will save you a lot of money in your folio. And then you won't be going out throughout the night when you're in the bar or comedy club, piano bar, disco. Be like, ah, should I get this drink? Should I not get this drink? I really want the drink, but... I, I have my, it's going to put me over my folio budget, just buy the drinking package, it's unlimited or in Carnival, it's 15 drinks, and trust me, I know what you're thinking, oh, I'm not going to max out 15 drinks, trust me, I've met people on Carnival before who have maxed out their 15 drink alcoholic drink, uh, drink limit, these are just alcoholic beverages on Carnival in the cheers package, 15 alcoholic beverages, Unlimited bottles of water, sodas, juice, space, unlimited non-alcoholic beverages. So it is worth the drinking package on Carnival and the other cruise lines. As I said, a beer is by itself $5.50 or higher. Mixed drinks, 
and shots about $8 a piece or higher. And if you get the specialty drinks like the frozen drinks and the uh, specialty glasses, those are at least $10. So if you get a couple of those each day, guess what? You, you um, are going to be surprised at how much they are, especially when you haven't gone on a cruise before, how expensive these drinks are. So always get the drinking package, prepay for it. It will save you a lot of money on your folio. As I said, you want to stay in your folio budget. This is one of the best ways to do it, is to prepay for your drinking package. Which goes into my ninth out of my 10 tips is pre-book as many items for the cruise as possible. Excursions, spa treatments, uh, transfers to and from the airport. If that you can do. Sometimes you can't pre-book those because of an early flight, late flight. But pre, if you can pre-book your shore excursions, pre-book your spa treatments, and also you want to consider if there are specialty restaurants on board and a certain night you want to go for like if it's a birthday, anniversary, uh, or you, you're going with a fairly large group and there's a certain night you all want to go to dinner together, especially on Norwegian.com, you can pre-book a specialty restaurant and make a reservation for it. So that's something, as I said, you prepay for it and it doesn't go on your folio. It's paid for already when you go on the cruise. They give you the, your tickets for the excursions will be, um, they will be delivered to your room. If you, certain, Norwegian doesn't allow you to spot book spa treatments on board, but they do allow you to spot, book the uh, thermal suite, which is about $199, $200, but it really is worth it, If and it's unlimited use, so you can use it every day, you can use it three times during the cruise, you can go twice a day if you choose, so that's something you want to consider, pre-book as many items as you possibly can, so it doesn't go on your cruise follow. Keep in mind, there are, all the ships have duty-free shops, which you are going to want to shop in. So if you can, pre-book as many items as possible. The shore excursions, the spa treatments, photo packages. Some cruise lines allow you pre-book the internet package. So what? pre-book as much as possible. In the long run, it will save you money and aggravation. It, this way, it's pre-booked. It's just an excursion. So excursions, you wait to book on board. By the time you get on board, the cruise excursion is sold out because it is a really popular excursion. So that's one thing, definitely pre-book the shore excursions. My last tip is the first day of the cruise, certain cruise lines, when you do check in on your e-documents, it asks you for time for average port for check-in when you want to get there. I always get the, to the port at 9.30 in the morning. Get there about 9.30 in the morning. The cruise, it won't start boarding to about 12, but they board by zones. The earlier you get to the cruise uh, port, they give you a zone number. The earlier you get there, the faster you get on board. Now, this doesn't apply um, for certain cruise lines where they give priority boarding if you have a certain level of membership status. I mean, obviously, they are going to be the first ones on board, but after that, the earlier you get to the cruise port, the earlier you get on board, and you can enjoy the ship, get a sh uh, seat by the pool, get, get into the buffet for lunch. Carnival has something called um, Faster to the Funk Pass. Now, it's about $50 per person, as I remember. I did it once. It is worth it, but they sell out really quickly. After the priority boardings, you are the next ones on board. So... That is something you really want to consider if you're going on Carnival. The faster to the fun pass also allows you priority disembarkment as well. So if you have an earlier flight, that definitely helps you out. Okay, um, so as I said, get to the port early because the sooner you get to the port, the sooner you get on board and it gives you time to explore the ships, you take a tour to spa, spa uh, just explore the ship. Get it. Um, you can take pictures, you can see basically and just enjoy yourself. It's the first day of the cruise, you can hang out by the pool, get a seat by the pool, get a drink, just enjoy the uh, ambience. It's your vacation. It has begun. Enjoy yourselves. Okay, so those are my top 10 tips 
for first time cruisers. As I said, not for everyone. Some people, if you've watched this in cruise before, you might be saying, yeah, these are things I do do. And there are a couple of things in here I didn't think of that I'm going to start considering. Um, these are when I do, it saves me time, aggravation, and just makes my life easier. As I said, they're not for everyone, but for first time cruisers, this is what I suggest. You can um, choose to follow them. You can choose to cruise your own way. It's up to you. But these are my tips and recommendations. Until next time, I'm Charlie, and I will see you again soon. Thank you.